Hi, welcome to CCLAIR. This is Dr. Zaida Chaudhry, and today's topic for the Grand Rounds is chronic illnesses and spiritual health. And I have students with me. I'm Allie from Duquesne. I'm Jim. I'm a behavioral health therapist at CCLAIR. And I'm Dan Valentine, a psychotherapist uh, specializing in holistic medicine. And I'm Stephen. I'm a student at LECOM. I'm a PA student at St. Francis. Wonderful. Okay, so. Um, what I was actually, a couple of months ago, I was listening to the NPR news, Shots Health News. And uh, what they say is people around the world are getting healthier and living longer. Infectious diseases are declining around the globe, but at the same time, chronic health problems are on the rise, particularly in the developing countries. Now, the leading cause of death and disability have changed from communicable diseases to non-communicable diseases in adults. Eating too much have overtaken hunger as a leading risk factor for illnesses. Tim Evans is a health and nutritionist specialist at the World Bank. He said 20 or 30 years we are dealing with diseases that were killers. Now we are dealing with the diseases that are not primarily killers, but chronic diseases like heart disease, injuries, mental health. And these issues are increasingly increasingly increasing in every part of the world. So what is a chronic illness? So the chronic illness, non-communicable -commun illnesses and that are prolonged in duration do not resolve spontaneously and rarely cure completely. It's different than the acute illnesses, the condition and symptoms appears very acutely like heart attack. So these chronic diseases are the leading cause of death and disability in the United States. Now, what is the growing burden of these diseases? Rapidly aging population. Mm -hmm. What is? Increased environmental risks. Great. And what are those risks like? Um, smoking, change in diet, increasing in activity, air pollution. Yeah, and we are in double jeopardy like still fighting with infectious diseases and at the same time experience, experience the impact of the chronic diseases. So I was uh, reading the CDC actually, Center for Disease Control, uh, what they talk about these uh, chronic illnesses, about one fourth of people with the chronic conditions have one or more daily activity limitation. And why it is important to recognize this daily activity limitation? Because that has a pretty big impact on your mind. They affect people of all ages, and now they are recognized as leading health concerns of the nation. About 133 million Americans are now recognized as having one, at least one or two chronic illnesses. More than 75% healthcare costs are due to chronic conditions. So there are some key chronic diseases. Do you know any of that? Um, some big chronic diseases are heart disease, um, stroke, cancer, or diabetes. Good, good, good. And then we have arthritis and we have obesity. So when we talk about a heart disease and stroke, are the first heart disease is the first and stroke is the third leading cause of death, accounting for more than 30% of the U.S. death each year. Cancer is the second leading cause of death, claims more than half a million lives each year. Diabetes is getting very common, it's the leading cause of kidney failure, actually non-traumatic kidney failure and lower extremity amputation because of um, uncontrollable sugar. And it's the, another, this is the cause of blindness too actually in the United States. Arthritis, arthritis are many. They can be rheumatoid arthritis, they are osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis is very common. Autoimmune disease is rheumatoid arthritis. That is becoming very common too. And that's the most common disability actually limits the activity for 19 million US adults. Obesity is becoming like a chronic like a chronic concern of all age groups. Uh, one in every adult and nearly one in every five young people aged 6 to 19 are obese. And what happens if you're obese? So the risk of stroke is increased. 
your atherosclerosis because your blood vessels are blocked, damaged. You have a risk of heart attack and kidney failure. So there are certain factors which are common, but they can be modified. Um, and what are those risk behavior that you have? Tobacco use, insufficient physical activity, poor eating habits, excessive alcohol use, stress, and environmental factor. Now, all of these actually are preventable. It depends upon the lifestyle, making changes in your lifestyle. If you see here, the smoke, more than 43 million, about one in five years ago, smoke. In the high school, it's one in five years high school students are current smoker. Then come the physical activity. What is the impact of the physical activity on your body? Because if you are not physically active, what happens? You gain more weight. More weight. And I was seeing the recommendation for the aerobic physical activity according to the guidelines for the American. They do much less than that. Then alcohol addiction. There are tons of issues with the alcohol addictions. You can have issues with your personality because alcohol, excessive alcohol can affect your brain, your central nervous system. You have issues with the sleep, lungs, skin, liver, kidney. Sexual functioning, they all are affected. The digestive system, your bones. So there are tons of things um, can be prevented if you're a moderate drinker. And poor eating habits, again, it's one of the actually evil in the society these days that we really do not recognize the importance of uh, eating and having good habits for eating and what is the good food. So, um, well, Dr. Chowdhury, uh, here at Seclair, we off we take a holistic view of an individual, not just the perhaps the presenting issues that they come in with. And perhaps I could ask my colleague, Dr. Gardner, to take a talk about the holistic view that we take at Seclair. Yeah, for uh, Dr. Valentine, yes, it's very important. Uh, once we come to the treatment yes. option, I think that would be wonderful if you can reflect how we are going to take uh, treat this uh, chronic yes. illness patient. What are the effective ways yes. uh, we can handle those kinds of situation? Because we are always here to educate patients. The purpose of education is so patients know, you know, what is what is a disease like and how they can uh, can be very ready to to fight with this. At the same time, they are ready to talk to the doctors because you need to have an understanding of your disease uh, so that you can give a good history to your physician and they are able to help you. Now, as I was talking about, but thank you James, we will, uh, we will discuss that and we'll handle that. Stress is the uh, stress is one of the actually big factors in our recovery because when you are getting number one older, number two chronic diseases, what happens? You're stressed out because you're not able to handle the things as you used to. Lack of physical activity, limitation of the physical activity affects your life. Chronic stress can both affect physical and mental health, right? And psychological well-being. By variety of problems that include anxiety, you can have depression, you can have insomnia in which you have problem with the sleep, high blood pressure, and your immune system, which is your fighting defense, is weakened. Now, it is a research, actually, research said that the stress contribute to the development of major um, illnesses such as heart disease, depression, and obesity, and it is one of the topmost cause. And also, when you have a physical limitation imposed by your heart diseases or lung diseases or arthritis, get into depression. Depression often leads to poor eating habits, and when you have poor e eating habits, could be either you are under eating less or you're more, become obese, right? Lack of exercise. Your hygiene is not good. So it complicates your whole recovery time and worsens your overall physical condition. So what is happening with all this is um, environmental factor play a big role actually in the chronic illnesses also. And when you're, you have a weakened immune system, when you're not eating well, okay, and you're a toxin in the environment which are affecting your body, what happens? You have this oxidative stress. And what is oxidative stress? It is your body is not able to handle what it should 
normally handles, right, occur when there is an imbalance between the body's production of the free radicals and its ability to detoxify them and repair the damage. Now, what are the free radicals? Free radicals actually are, are, are the products of your normal metabolism, but, but they, are, they are detoxified by themselves. But when your immune system is suppressed, you're not able to detoxify them. And the free radicals become so immense and they start destroying your cells and eventually it can lead to DNA damage and uh, you can get into many diseases. You can get to heart diseases, you can get to actually tons of diseases which we are going to come in the next slide. Our cells then naturally produce unstable molecules because of those byproducts and these are non ends which I discussed as free radicals. So uh, oxidative stress and inflammation are very closely related and each can contribute to many diseases. So as I said, oxidative stress involves various diseases. So do you remember anything, any disease which oxidative stress can cause? Cancer. Heart right. disease, Very good. diabetes, mm -hmm. yeah. liver disease, kidney disease. Good. Um, some respiratory diseases, um, multiple organs can be affected at one time, skin diseases, eye diseases. Yeah, so these are all due to oxidative stress. Although we take stress, one stress is that a person has depression, a person is stressed, a person is taking stress, but if you see the stress affects everything. If you have a chronic illness, you have a stress. If you have a depression, you have a stress. If you have actually named any disease, you have a stress in your body. Body is stressed out. And when the body is stressed out, then we are dealing with all this inflammation and cancer and aging and, and multiple organ damages. So then comes the part, do you have tools to, de to deal with the chronic illnesses? And certainly we do have, right? So living with a chronic disease is like piloting a small plane. So what do you do if you want your plane to reach to the destination safely? You need flight instructions, right? You prevent maintenance, yeah? And you have safe flight plans and in traffic control, they guide you. The same way with the patient also. You educate patients, self-management support, effective clinical management and treatment plan, and you do the close follow-up. And in this whole thing, actually, and, and I think um, I'm very glad that at Sitler we offer so many educational seminars and retreats and we educate patients because inform activated patient and what is that? What is inform activated patient? That patient whom we educate and they know they're active in their uh, illness, actively participant. So we need to help our patients become more involved in the care. Our interaction need to foster the patient's sense of control and responsibility and caring for self. So patient understands the disease process and realizes his or her role as a daily self-manager. Family and caregivers are engaged in patient self-management and the provider is viewed as a guide on the side, not the sage on the stage. So um, how you care for the self? Healthy body and the spirit mean many different things to different people. In the sense of wholeness, sense of knowingness, and a sense of something far greater and more wonderful. So in these kind of conditions, we can take like two paths. Either we just, you know, cuddle ourselves in the bed and die, or what do you do? We open ourselves to a new journey, okay? new journey of how we can do. Speak our mind and aspects of ourselves honest, clear communication uh, with your physician, right? If the patient know what the disease is like and if we educate our patient, they are able to handle actually their own communication skills with the doctors. And educating patients that if they forget, they can just jot down in the diary before they go to the doctor's office, right? So communication and good history is the, is, is the best thing. And you being a medical student, you know that. Mm -hmm. An important thing actually, I teach in your same college, I'm, uh, I would say that history taking skills should be um, thorough mm -hmm. because much of the diagnosis actually sh we should figure out from the history the patient is giving rather than going through all those tests and before the test we should know what is wrong with the patient by thorough history and physical examination which is very important. 
and tending to your spirit, feeding your soul, act, just not just uh, be participant in the activity that you feel uh, good. Try new things, dance, yoga, meditation, prayer, enjoy outdoors, develop a hobby, painting, whatever you like, anything. If you want counseling, you can go to the counselors. And this is and another thing which I was saying, accepting the situation, the patient who accept their situation and they recognize that they have limitation now and they are not able to do or handle the things the way they used to do in the past, that is the best way of healing quickly. Now accepting sometimes is very difficult, but if you accept, just getting out of the bed sometimes can be enormous accomplishment for the patients if you accept the fact that this is my limitation. Yes. So we, for the patient to educate them to set the goals according to the energy levels and abilities for that day, right? Permit yourself to achieve your goal. And every day is different, not the same day. Maybe some days will be good, you can do more. Some days will be bad, you will not be able to do much. So um, always allow a patient to rest when needed. And most important for the patient is to ask for help. If they really need help, they should seek help. Avoid stress, we have talked about. Whenever you ask anybody how much stressful you are, and the answer is there are only two times I feel stressed, day and night. So, <laughs> so, so we are stressed out 24 hours. Maybe it's a small stress, maybe it's a big stress, large stress accumulates, and then what happens? Not such a So um, to the patient, advice would be do not caught up into could da, would da, should da syndrome. I mean, I could have done that, you would have done that, I shouldn't have done that. Because then you are building up expectations. And the more expectations you have, the more stress out you will be. So relax. So the only expectation you have to meet is your own. So change your expectation. Nutrition is a big part which we always actually emphasize the facts of nutrition at Seclair also. Seclair is a holistic actually practice here. Nutrition is very important. Whatever you eat, that is what your body is, right? What we eat. So if you are putting junk in the body, our body will speak for the junk, right? So we can never be healthy people if you are eating junk. Maybe for a few years, right? Because when we are young, we can handle so much. Mm -hmm. But then later on, what happens? We collapse. Eating a healthy diet is essential for the body to heal. We should try to eliminate things such as sugar, caffeine, refined foods, and unhealthy fats. Replace these with whole foods, like vegetables, whole grains, nuts, seeds, fruits, fresh meat, usually white meat in the form of fish is the best, and also the chicken, if it is homegrown chicken, right? Not the growth hormone chicken. <laughs> <laughs> and exercise. Exercises. Exercise is must. Exercise is very important. It's a wonderful outlet for your depression, stress, and anxiety. Regular exercise actually improves energy levels, helps you sleep better, promotes healthy bowel movements, boosts the immune system, and aids your body in natural healing process. And uh, I have spoken a lot, actually. And um, I think it's the time for us to ask uh, Dr. Ruth and Valentine how would she recommend these patients and take a holistic approach? Uh, Dr. Uh, Chaudhry, you did, one more time, you did a beautiful job in presenting to us um, uh, the effect of chronic disease on the body, mind, and spirit. And whenever I, I'm listening to your presentation, I I'm thinking about energy, you know, and 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 those who are uh, with a chronic disease still have a energy in their body, and we want to make the most out of that energy. And so you mentioned the um, the uh, whole uh, concept of stress. So to uh, minimize the stress in the person's life is be very very important. And I just want to emphasize uh, the spiritual health, and, and you already mentioned it, um, the, to ground themselves, that individual can ground themselves in their own prayer life, their mindfulness, to be able to uh, uh, 
uh, stroll if they can in, in the uh, backyard to look at nature, to look at art. And, and so the, the energy from the mitochondria to, to the animating energy that's connected to the universal energy will be uh, to give them a, a sense of a zest for their life in the place where they are. And, and so uh, to care for body, mind, and spirit is very, very important in order to manage the chronic disease. Yeah. Yes. And here at Seclair, we do it, and we do it well. Thank you so much. You're and welcome. in the end, I would say beautiful thoughts and positive emotions are the stuff miracles are made of. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.